um, two computers. So I'm doing that totally new for now for you. So you can see me struggling. Okay. So all right, now we have it. So online tools for virtual meetings. Um, but before I start out there, um, I have, um, and of course I need to do this on the other, what's going on? Okay, so today's agenda is we have announcement and upcoming events. We do introductions and our today's question. And then we have a little bit of a program talking about the online tools for uh, virtual meetings. And then we have the Q and A and goodbyes. Um, later on, so today's question, and I put it in here first so you can think about it, and then when we are at introductions, then you have it. Um, so what's your lockdown pandemic name? And it's how you feel and the last thing you ate. And for me, it says uh, no focus yogurt is my name. So you can call me that no focus yogurt. <laughs> Um, what we always do is uh, we thank our sponsors. Um, normally, it would be the Unitarian Universalist congregation where we meet and they give us the um, meeting space and the uh, space in the foyer uh, where we have our food um, for free and now for the third year. We are very grateful for that. The Community Foundation of Collier County gave us a grant um, two years ago. We have not, we have almost um, done with. Um, uh, using that, and then uh, big sponsor also N10, the nonprofit technology network, and we will get back to that in a minute. Then also TechSoup, um, Keller Williams, and Poly Systems are our sponsors. Um, our upcoming event. Um, so we meet the first. Tuesday of the month. So it's May 5, June 2nd, July 7, August 4th. Uh, in May, we are going to review our own databases for hidden gems and privacy, and it will be a panel discussion um, with um, experts in the field, and they can do it from all different angles. And then in June 2nd, we have a nonprofit help desk. So it's a round table meeting, tutorial, tech 101, bring your issues, big and small, and we just tackle them um, with the wisdom in the room. And then July is we do review of project management tools um, and have our seventh birthday celebration. We started this uh, group in 2013. So, and in July was our first meeting. And then August 4th, we will talk about the tips and tools on building and improving your brand. Now the um, meetings, from May, June, and July, they are scheduled to be online. Like this meeting format, uh, an hour, hour and a half kind of uh, meeting, <clears throat> not the two hour meeting that we have in person. Also, you need to bring your own food and your own beer and your own wine. New wine. <laughs> or tea. Um, yeah, so those are the upcoming events um, in the meantime. Yes, do the other. Um, we also have um, a list of N uh, nonprofit technology events, courses, and webinars that's online. So um, um, that's on this link. Uh, are you still seeing my screen? Yes. So on Epitex Project, there are 49 learning events for nonprofit, uh, technology events for nonprofits. Um, staff um, from 12 trusted sources um, like Nonprofit Tech for Good and 10 Nonprofit Marketing Guide, Bloomerang, and some more. And then there's a Google Calendar where you can kind of uh, subscribe to it and put it on your cal calendar. And then um, there are the top big five, <laughs> top five suggestions that I have. Um, the top of one is um, uh, the MNR Benchmark 2020. Um, the data odyssey that will come out um, I, in April, April 23rd, I think. And then uh, um, four more. And then this is the whole list. And it will all have the link to the description at the, and the registration. Some of them are free. Um, a lot of them are free. And some of them are kind of low cost. Um, yeah, so this is when you 
um, when you need to level up, and a lot of people in, the, in when economic um, uh, turmoil is, uh, what they try to do is kind of say, okay, um, let's level up the skills, and um, we, um, yeah, kind of take uh, one one class a week or something like that. Um, there are also multiple uh, multi parts. Um, events in here, like the project management fundamentals for Man 10, or here the, um, the, there was another one. Well, you can see them all, yeah. Okay, and so the link, there was a question here, was NP, nptp.us nptechedu0420. Yeah. So that's for you all. Um, oops. Before we go into uh, introductions, I have a special guest for you tonight, and that's Amy Semper Ward, the CEO of N10. And I'm going to stop my screen share so we all can um, see us uh, together. Uh, welcoming Amy, who has is um, calling in from Portland. Oregon. Hi, Amy. Yeah. yeah. Hi. The pandemic has meant that the commute time between Portland and Florida is uh, very short now. So here I am. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> what's your lockdown pandemic name? Uh, my lockdown pandemic name, I wish that this didn't sound so Portland, but it is true and I'm an honest person. So overwhelmed avocado toast. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, um, so how is Portland doing? How is Nten doing? Tell us. We're a doing okay. Yeah, Oregon is. Oregon had a pretty early shelter-in-place order for the entire state, and we have been, um, as far as like a response, one of the kind of better states. So we're having pretty low contained numbers. We shipped 140 ventilators to New York actually um, because we're kind of managing our hospitals here. Um, you know, field hospitals and stuff have been set up, but we haven't had any hospitals yet, you know, kind of hit that scary capacity space. Um, so as a state, we're doing okay, but it also means, I'm sure you all can appreciate this, like, you know, all of those messages that folks are sharing that like, if you're doing a good job, it feels like all of this was for nothing because you don't ever see the impact of what it could have meant, right? So a lot of Oregon, um, as such a outdoorsy state, um, you know, folks have been really good staying in their homes, but it's like beautiful 65 degrees and sunny outside and everyone is like, but I'm normally hiking or, you know, whatever. So there's a lot of kind of restlessness, I think, but folks are feeling good about the numbers and you know, that it is making a difference. And N10 staff, we have, we have nine staff here, and then we have six staff all over the place. So we actually do have a staff person in Seattle, in San Francisco, in New York, places that are pretty scary right now. So, um, you know, our daily team meetings have some space just for people to kind of say where they're at. And, you know, our, our coworker in New York, like, hasn't even left his apartment in a month because it's just so scary there, you know, groceries are only delivery. Like, um, so feeling super privileged and grateful to have a yard, even if it's small, like I can physically go outside <laughs> and the weeds are just waiting for me to come, <laughs> to come work on them. So yeah, we're doing okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, filling uh, us in. Um, you also have an April, um, the Tech Accelerator um, yep. happening. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, totally. So Tech Accelerate is kind of a funny name, but uh, it's the name of a totally free resource on the N10 website that is a tech assessment tool. So it's pretty in-depth. It's, it's 70 plus questions, and it's meant to look at both 
practices and technology. Um, so practices around how you use technology or which staff use certain tools. Um, and it's looking all the way across your organization. And after you complete all of the answers, you submit those and get a custom report that shows you kind of your score on every individual question as well as your overall score. And that scoring is, is based on uh, kind of four, four part um, like ladder that N10 developed from 10 years of doing this research. And you also get when you're looking at your report uh, resources, if it's, you know, you scored really low because maybe whoever in your organization works on that d doesn't know a lot about it, there's resources right there for people to start learning um, so that they could improve their score. And folks can take the assessment as often as you want. I don't think you need to take it every day. Your score is not going to change every day. But, you know, if you do make some investments in your technology and your organization, you make some changes, uh, it can be worth it to go in, do another assessment and have that report to show your board or your staff, look, you know, we've really made progress. It was worth, it was worth doing that. And the purpose of it is from our side, a tool for organizations to have something that isn't viewed as a single staff person or a single consultant's opinion on what the organization should do, but kind of a trusted external voice saying, these are the most critical places for your investment. Um, and we've heard from a lot of organizations that they have used that to kind of convince their ED or their board that, you know, maybe something shiny isn't what they need to do. They really need to bolster up um, security or better, you know, website, wh whatever category they may be low in. Um, so that's totally free. You can use it anytime. But for organizations who complete an assessment in the next couple weeks, we'll also um, make available for folks to apply, because uh, we don't know how many people it will be, but we've got about 10 small cash grants, um, as high as $1,000 and, and going down, that can help, you know, whether it's paying for someone to take some courses or it's uh, paying for, you know, some lower cost technology directly for what you're looking to improve. Um, we don't care how you use it. It, you know, we're not a funder. It's really just cash we send to you. Um, but that's an option if you work with an organization that would be able to submit an assessment in the next couple weeks, we'll email everybody who does and give them access to um, apply for one of those cash grants. Well, that's awesome. Because I think having an outside um, yeah, voice tell us, okay, what happens or what, where you should go, it's, it's easier to do this um, in the organization than bring in mm -hmm. a consultant in where you always have to, to kind of think, is, is there some um, yeah, self-serving kind of right. uh, assessment there? Yeah, so yeah, um, yeah I would really I recommend that to anybody who has to um, go through um, tech investment and um, do some strategic planning for the, this year or the next year. In, in terms of technology and what they have. Thank you so much, Amy. Yes, thanks. Yeah. There's something else that you want us to definitely know before um, I go back into the screen share. I don't think so. I'm happy to be here. I'm going to duck out in a minute to go back to my other meeting, but it's just so nice to get to see everyone because we don't ever get to go to all the tech clubs. And now, it, I mean, I would love that you weren't meeting online, but you know, the one little silver lining is now we can kind of step in on, on all of those events around the country. So thanks for letting me join and have a great meeting. And a big thank you to N10 for supporting us with the yes. new website and everything. Yeah, thank of you. Of course. Yay, of course. Bye, everyone. Bye, Amy. Bye. Thanks for joining us. So, as I. So I'm juggling again my computer. And I'm getting better, I hope. So this is the program that um, Amy talked about. If you go to the N10.org uh, N10 uh, homepage, yeah, you see the, the button to get started on the assessment, but also what it's about with the April 17. So you get your deadline in there um, th directly from the homepage. Um, so that's that. Oops, no, oops. Do. 
So that was Amy, Amy Semper Ward, CEO of Intent. And now it's up to, so um, what, what happened here? Now it's up to you to do, let's do introduction. And I'm just keeping that up for uh, a few minutes and then we go back to our Brady Bunch for you. So we go around the room and um, you introduce yourself with your name and your organization and your lockdown pandemic name um, and to kind of uh, learn more about you. All right, Donna, do you want to start? Oh, no. Yeah, I Okay. Who do you who do you want to start? <laughs> With Donna, uh, and we all need to learn how to mute ourselves and unmute ourselves <laughs> in a meeting. All okay, right, Donna, do you want to start? My name is Donna Johnston. Um, I am retired and do a little bit of consulting work on the side in grant writing and strategic planning, um, working with nonprofits, which I love to do. Um, I don't know. I don't think I have a pandemic name. My brothers call me Ducky. No, no. The, uh, it's a combination of that. How do you feel and what your aid last? Oh, um, happy chicken burrito. How's that? All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Who's next? Duke? Are you next? Maybe. I can be. Just call me Lonely Cypress Grove. I'm a wetlands guy. Thanks. No pandemic name. Yeah, Cypress Club. <laughs> All right. So who's next? Uh, who's on this side for me? That's, I'm Tracy. I'm Tracy Kennedy, and um, I, uh, I'm, I'm on the board for um, Bikes for Tikes here in um, Southwest Florida. And my uh, lockdown name would be Antsy Crackers. <laughs> Antsy Crackers. Yeah, that could also be a very good band name. Yes. And then the next one is, is John? And I point this way. <laughs> John is on yeah. this one. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the, there's two Johns. I'll, I'll claim the first oh. John spot. So, yeah. I'm John Chabut. I'm from Victoria here in Canada. I work for a, an organization called the Military Family Resource Center. And I, my pandemic name is like Frazzled Beans, if that's. <laughs> nice, yeah. Yeah, we all feel kind of frazzled, overwhelmed, yeah. Sharon? Um, Sharon Gray, and I'm trying to help a couple of organizations with their tech stuff, even though I'm all self-learned anyway. Uh, Unitarian Universalist Congregation all faiths Unitarian congregation in um, Fort Myers, um, the Lee County chapter of now mm -hmm. and a humanist group free inquiry group. So we're working on all those. I'm trying to get them. I think we've finally got the um, congregation to go in to buy the professional version of Zoom. So which they're doing uh, mm -hmm. my pandemic name. I'm trying to think um, busy as ever salad. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, that's good that you're busy. <laughs> um, so Linda, Linda Mo, are you? Hi. Listening? Yeah. Um, I'm Linda, and um, I'm I'm a possibility sandwich um, <laughs> because I'm I'm really looking at the all the possibilities. I'm on the board for um, the. Uh, Watamata Community Law Center in Auckland, New Zealand. All um, right. So, um, and I also do um, coaching and facilitation work. So, of course, our world has been turned upside down, which I think is a good thing because what has been has been rather boring and um, I've been waiting and waiting for people to be ready to take on doing new things and now they're really forced to. Yeah. Um, and so that's gonna open up new possibilities because people are going to be more ready, they're gonna be more computer savvy. Um, so it just opens up all sorts of possibilities. So it's busy, it's overwhelming, but it's exciting too. 
Yeah, I imagine. Yeah. So New Zealand, are you right now in New Zealand? Yeah. Yeah. I'm in Auckland and it's 11 a.m. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. So it's in the morning for you, uh, but it's it tomorrow. Yes. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for joining us. It's uh, a quite a global enterprise here yeah, from all the West to all the South um, here. It's really good. Now, Anne, it's your turn, I think. Hi, uh, I'm Ann Katzoff of Ask Design. I'm a, a web designer and front-end developer, work with a lot of nonprofits, and I live here in Naples, Florida. Um, my pandemic name is uh, Trying to Stay in the Moment, Almond Butter and Banana. All right. <laughs> You're having a hard time staying in the moment? At times. Yeah, I tend to... Think about the future or what if, mm -hmm. what if, what if. So I don't want to go down that path. Oh, good to see you, Anne. Good to see and you. And Suzanne. Hello. Um, my pandemic name would be Zoomed Out Smoothies. <laughs> I have uh, several Zoom meetings every week now. <laughs> And don't, don't be surprised if you see a dog end up right here because she loves Zoom and thinks everyone's talking to her because people we all. <laughs> say hello to her. <laughs> yeah. so, far so good. I work for the University of Florida uh, here in Naples and I work with food and fitness programs and I'm uh, working on Ciclavia Amakali, a fitness program family fitness event that's once a month. Today, everybody outside and a lot of people in there, yes. Yeah. All right, good to see you. Hi, Barry, it's your turn now. Hi, I'm Barry and I'm in Naples, Florida. And my name would be Energized Orange Jelly Bean. All right. <laughs> I recently took on a new position as a director of operations for Marco Mapping and Surveying. Okay. So wearing a lot of hats, it's like on week three. I, one week I'm laying off all these people, suspending their jobs, and then the next day I'm taking a new job when there's a pandemic going on. So energized is where that comes from, and I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Don, it's your turn, I guess. Don, are you ready? Don Beach? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Don Beach. I'm president of PC Bug, the uh, Naples Technology User Group. Uh, basically, we're having no meetings, and we're going to see about doing a Zoom meeting uh, for Thursday this, this month. And we might have to do it the following month, depending on how that works. And uh, I guess if you've got a pandemic name, it'd be Naples Tech Guy Cheeseburger. Okay. <laughs> well, welcome, Don, for, uh, into this meeting. Uh, we hope that you maybe come up also uh, in the future and uh, uh, join our uh, little illustrious group for dinner at some point. Sounds like a good deal. Yeah, all right. Michael? Michael froze on us. Oh, no, I'm here. I'm sorry. Missed, it, missed the name. Uh, Mike Von Plensky. I uh, am the director of the Florida Helps Foundation, small nonprofit here in Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach area. Also semi-retired uh, Defense Department exec and do a lot of that. I uh, do consulting work. I have a consultancy uh, of one and do some work uh, with a lot of clients. Uh, really enjoy the nonprofit side of, of the work. That's why I got into this world. Uh, especially working part-time is a great thing uh, up in sunny Southwest Florida. And uh, Bridget, Bridget and I m m met, what, uh, geez, five, six, seven years ago when you were first kicking out. And I've been uh, a little bit uh, absent from the gang because of the distance, but uh, I'm really enjoying being part of this tonight. So thank you. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, yes. Mark? Mark? Sorry, my, my speaker was. Oh, 
You're muted again. Sorry. Uh, I'm Mark Benson. I'm a member of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation at Greater Naples and a supporter of Tech for Good. And my pandemic uh, hashtag is Mellow Pizza. Mellow Pizza. Yeah, nice. <laughs> so who's next? Tracy, you already did this. Um, Pete. Hi, my name is uh, Pete Quilley. I uh, run the Vancouver Adult ADD Support Group. I um, have two blogs on ADHD and uh, coach adults with ADD over the phone. Um, pandemic lockdown name would be Curious Oatmeal, I guess. Um, I do have a question for people that maybe they can answer later because I'm going to have a four o'clock call. With my support group, um, because ADD, we're so backwards in Canada compared to the United States, it's very stigmatized and we can't meet in person. I'm wondering if anyone knows that there's platforms that aren't as um, insecure in privacy um, problems as Zoom, where I could sort of run the, the meeting, but instead of having video or even audio that someone might capture and put online, and then out them and have them fired in a global pandemic and a global depression, which might not be good, um, that they could sort of put in chat and I could just paste the chat somehow into that thing. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a long shot, but privacy concerns um, are a real issue, especially when there's organized grief or trolls uh, um, uh, going after the support groups um, in the United States and on Discord chats and other rooms and deliberately spreading like, you know, the hate stuff, porn, stuff like that, as well as all the other um, security flaws. Yeah, so Zoom has been very fast in reacting to the, um, the well, it's uh, pretty much the, the Zoom bombers <laughs> or, um, yeah, that kind of come in and, um, um, post adult content on public uh, URLs. Um, that's why we did not send out the um, public, the URL out in public, but only in email. So um, a, a, someone who does a web scraper doesn't come through. So I would, um, if you are not looking for video and audio and just chat, I think Slack um, would be a good way to do this. Yeah, um, there are multiple teams that do Slack chat meetings yeah, that are facilitated, but people don't have to talk and people don't have to be on video. They're just all there with their keyboards. Um, that would be one thing. Um, Zoom is fine um, with, uh, if you do educational things, because you can lock it down as a host. Yeah, you can say, okay, everybody goes into the waiting room and, and you can kind of one by one get everybody in. You can have a password on your a Zoom link that works fine. So um, I, I think the um, and Zoom has really reacted to it. Those two features are available for anybody who has a, a starting yesterday that has a Zoom account. Yeah, so, um, but I'm glad you brought this up, Pete. Um, I hope it um, and and thank you also for the link for the um, reduced distractions <laughs> um, from the support group. Yeah. Yeah, Even if we don't have ADD, you know, we, we you know, might, might, might be useful. But uh, I just sent you a link uh, beyond yeah. the Zoom bombing thing, which uh, you mentioned. There's a ton of security and privacy clause and having Zoom sort of linked to uh, China and their surveillance state. And uh, by Chinese law, they can force any company on, in China to cooperate with this by services. So you may want to just check that out for later. But thanks yeah. for the good idea about Slack. All right. Well, let's kind of uh, continue with the introductions. Uh, we skip Birgit. Oh, no. My name is Birgit Polyhank. I have a web development company since 2002. Um, but I also work uh, with a lot of nonprofits on uh, 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 through the Naples Freenet beginning and now through Amputech projects to help with um, uh, websites, web hosting, um, and then uh, technology strategy and uh, implementation 
in all kinds of ways. Um, we are uh, using CVCRM for nonprofits if they need a CRM. Um, that's also open source connected with WordPress. Um, I'm also um, uh, a community leader in the WordPress community where we have worldwide um, meetings and meetups and conferences. There are, we canceled about 35 WordCamps and I was glad that I went to the last WordCamp in Miami, which was in February. And after that, everything was canceled. It was kind of really um, disturbing at one point, but also we were very busy and we did a lot of testing um, of uh, online tools. Um, and as I said, my um, lockdown name is No Focus. What did I eat? Yogurt. <laughs> no Focus Yogurt. <laughs> So next we have uh, John, John Kadasi. No, no John, you can unmute yourself. Okay. Janine, are you? Um, do you wanna introduce yourself? Can you hear me, can you hear me, can you hear me? Yeah, you very well, yes. Oh, good, good, okay. I'm uh, Janine Hudak, I work for the Jewish Federation of Greater Naples, and I'd say mine would be, um, get out of the house, Janine, cream cheese. <laughs> <laughs> I'm <laughs> just, it works better if I get up in the morning and get out of the house, and I usually do that if I do have to go to the office, like real quick, we're trying to avoid, you know, as little as possible go into the office, but sometimes, you know, to use the postage and whatever. So that will, that works well. Otherwise I'm just kind of like a stay at home. And then I've been de dealing with a lot of the, just this past two or three weeks, just adjusting and getting, you know, um, set up we, we switched out laptops and just doing one screen instead of two screens. Um, I re-downloaded some, you know, Microsoft Office, you know, that I didn't have on my machine. And so it's been a lot of, you know, just getting through little tech hurdles step by step. So that's, you know, didn't really, yeah, that was a big part of it. So, mm. right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we went through that as well. It took me about two weeks to kind of adjust. I'm now in, uh, in the, my fifth week or starting tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So and we have yeah, one couple weeks. Say again. Christy T. Hello. Um, I'm Christine Truman, and I live in San Diego. I work for Hub Sea World Research Institute, and we're on lockdown. We do have a few people that still have to work because of the fish that need to be fed. Um, let's see. My lockdown name would be as somebody else was talking. Um, my lockdown name would be remoting from home yogurt. All right. Oh, another yogurt. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us from San Diego. Um, so we have what we had. We had Portland, we have San Diego, we have uh, Victoria, Vancouver, um, and um, I New, New Zealand. New Zealand. New Zealand. Well, New Zealand is big. So what was the town? Um, Auckland? Auckland, yes, yes, yeah, awesome. Auckland. Yeah, yeah. Well, welcome everybody. Um, glad to see you here. And um, well, let's start, uh, get into, um, we, I hope, I have now um, um, not many minutes left. So let's go into that uh, present, uh, the, the slides that I have kind of prepared a little bit, if I ever want, oops. So um, we could talk about equipment, then uh, requirements of online event um, software, um, then tools that uh, cover uh, meetings as well as webinar talks kind of thing, or conferences, and then online meeting formats, um, and then how to keep the live audience and then um, engaged, how to keep live audience engaged and uh, keep the attention, and then uh, a list of resources. So, um, the equipment for online meetings, uh, and you see it all kind of now, we have uh, the camera. Um, I think not everybody, not, not a whole lot of people have headphones. 
Um, if you are a presenter and or in a conference kind of live, uh, Facebook Live or something like that, it might be good to have headphones. The microphone on your computer or on your phone works for Zoom quite well. Other systems will have might have problems. Um, I right now I'm in the system with two computers, so I definitely need to um, shut down the speaker as well as mute the other computer so I'm not getting any feedback. Uh, or you get any uh, every, uh, feedback there. Um, so, um, and then you need a meeting, webinar, or streaming software to um, put this all online. And of course, you need an internet connection that needs to have a little bit of oomph on there. Um, I don't think you get it with a, um, a connection under one megabyte. It's going to be really less video and more audio. Uh, megabits, not megabytes, sorry. But uh, so we are all seem to be quite um, um, privileged to have fast internet connection and that definitely um, facilitates online meetings. Okay. So what are the features that you would need? So if you say, okay, I want to do this, so what do I need? I need, you need a URL to join and to attend the meeting. And that also then if you want people to register, um, that gives you that. Um, you also want a chat window for Q&A or inter attendee chatty, uh, chatter, um, like we have it now, uh, where we share links and have other um, comments for that. Um, the software also needs screen sharing capabilities um, or video watching capabilities, meaning that you can um, upload a video that then runs and everybody can view, um, and also hear. So I was involved in a, a word camp that were, went virtual because they had to cancel the, um, the live event. Um, and uh, they had uh, tested a, a panel discussion and they wanted to have more than four people in there. And they were using Crowdcast as the video, the conference system, but, um, but they wanted, and Crowdcast only lets you four people in, but they wanted to have six at the panel. So they did it in a Zoom meeting they were actually testing it, but they, what they didn't test was if the audio comes through the Zoom meeting into Crowdcast um, because they could hear each other, but the audience was not able to hear them. So they had to scramble a bit. So that's certainly something you need to test out if you have something like that. Um, you definitely need enough space for expected audience. Um, Zoom gives you um, quite a bit of, uh, even on the free account, uh, quite a bit of, I think it's up to 100 uh, people in the meeting. Um, Hangout, Google Hangout is there as well, but they only gives you, um, I think, 12 or something like that. So it really depends on the tool. And you also need enough time for the expected length of the event. Um, some of the live um, tools, they give you unlimited time, yeah, but they only record four hours or something like that, yeah. Um, if you do it with Zoom, Zoom has recording. You can record it on your um, on your um, computer or in the cloud, but um, it's also a little bit of a, um, a, a space issue here, yeah, especially when you do it on your local computer. Um, all right. So those are what um, are the other features that you think of that a system need to have? Um, if you if you yeah, uh, kind of just put it in the chat. Um, So, um, no, Zoom has not suspended the fees beyond the uh, uh, usual 40 minute period. But what you can do is kind of uh, schedule uh, one meeting after the next um, and then have your audience just flip over to the next, um, to the next uh, link. Yeah? And then you can have longer uh, meetings. Um, so, um, okay. All right, so Q&R, um, yes, the sound quality improves dramatically uh, with headphones. That's definitely um, true, Anne. Um, it also uh, increases dramatically with a good microphone. <coughs> and um, they don't need to be expensive, that's true. Um, I have recently um, got myself, I'm, I'm um, 
um, experimenting with a, um, a head, uh, headphone. Oh, you meant microphone. All right. Uh, but um, with a headphone that is um, on the ears, but then it has a microphone like here um, next to the mouth. So it might um, also have some, so you don't have a, a big microphone, but it's very uh, close to your head. Um, so I promise that when we go into uh, Q&A, I, I think I should get going and then we do the Q&A last because we only have a, another 14 minutes, 17 minutes. And I just wanted to get through the information so we have. Um, and how you create a uh, password for Zoom meetings, it's in the Zoom when you create a meeting, um, you have to enable it. There's one is enabled password and then it creates the password automatically for you. Um, it's in the uh, meeting setup. Um, so Zoom, um, we are talking about uh, the pro, pro um, account starts at $15 uh, a month. If you go through um, um, TechSoup, they have, uh, you can also get um, um, additional discounts on them. And um, also the webinar capabilities. That's the capabilities where everybody is not going to be in a meeting, but you can go up to 100 in a, um, and you can have polls and Q&A, real thing. So um, separate from the chat. <clears throat> so you can um, uh, kind of keep the question answer to a certain tool, um, a certain section of your uh, meeting. So the, uh, another um, one is Jitsi Meet at the, it's open source video conference platform that's free to use all day and every day. Um, I have not used it, but it looks very um, attractive, especially the uh, open source part and the free part, but it's also out of uh, Europe. So the, um, the privacy issues are, because they have higher privacy requirements, uh, are um, a little bit better tied down. Uh, that might be something for Pete and his group if you want to have a video conference uh, platform or for anybody. Um, and then the next one is Google Meet. Uh, it's free for G Suite users, uh, has recording, and um, Google just um, opened it up for up to 250 people uh, to facilitate the meetings. Um, and those can also be recorded and scheduled to go on uh, uh, Google Live, uh, YouTube Live, sorry. Um, and then next one, that's YouTube Live. Um, you have to ha access a YouTube channel. You can enable a live stream there. Um, but it's a little bit of a workup if you don't have a channel yet. Um, you need to kind of go through, create a channel, verify your YouTube account, and then enable live streaming. And the slide deck that I will make available for everybody, um, uh, will have all the links in there. Um, so, from so the um, YouTube Live is the first one of the tools where you um, have a larger audience, but you only have a, um, a, a speaker um, kind of. Um, there are only um, three or four people on 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 the video, and the rest is in chat. There's a live chat window on uh, on YouTube Live. And it will automatically record it and put it in place of the live meeting on your channel uh, once the meeting is over. It takes about half an hour to render the whole meeting, depending on how long it is. But um, uh, YouTube, the studio also has, um, the creator studio also has some editing capabilities. So you can kind of, you can um, uh, clip it on the, on the beginning or at the end, yeah, depending on um, if you want to. Uh, take out some some of the um, uh, things that you said <laughs> at the beginning. Um, another one is PGI. That's um, actually a video conferencing tool out of Canada um, with uh, different pricing levels, but also free for unlimited meetings up to 125 participants. Um, and it also allows you to record. Um, I have not used it, but it looks uh, quite um, attractive as well. Um, another live um, tool is Facebook Live, where you can have live meetings. Um, it's available for pages as well as Facebook groups. Um, 
and there are some tips in the link about uh, going Facebook Live. Also, it's, um, you cannot have somebody come on camera with you, though so that's a downside. Some of the other tools actually allow that. So if you want to do Q&A, you can have um, people on, on, on the call or on the uh, show to uh, contribute. Um, Believe.tv is more a live streaming tool that integrates, so it's its own tool but it also integrates with YouTube and Facebook Live. Um, you can have maximum uh, two people on screen on three events per month, um, and it, uh, but it does not give you a recording, but it lets you push through to YouTube Live, and that's where you get the recording. Um, it also is quite nice because it allows you to have comments, uh, like the chat is here on the right-hand side, um, yeah, and it kind of uh, is a little static. Um, because nobody says anything right now. But um, in, in Be Live TV, you can have the comments, right, uh, scrolling up the, the, the live stream. So it's kind of people watching it and see the comments um, go by um, directly there. So um, we're gonna skip that and then gonna just go to a few um, online meeting formats that we will try out. Um, like uh, interact, uh, the birds of a feather, it's kind of a breakout room for particular topics over lunch. So you could have multiple uh, Zoom meetings or multiple um, uh, Google Meets or, um, and then just talk um, in those uh, topics, uh, um, just conversational. Um, you could also have an interactive educational, like a speaker who trends for 20 minutes um, and then Q&A for 20 minutes in the meeting. That's what we could do now. Um, or you who have a round robin, there is no presentation, everybody is on screen and it's a, it's a guided uh, fac facilitative meeting where you kind of agree on a topic and then the different aspects of the topic and you discuss it through. Um, we will try, uh, the next one is a help desk hour um, online. Uh, we'll try that on the WordPress meetup um, that also uh, went um, virtual uh, for the next three meetings. Um, and I think in June, we have a WordPress help desk um, hour online on Meetup. Um, of course, you can also, for those who are not in the area, we are, you're welcome to also um, join us there um, on uh, WordPress Southwest Florida, SWFL. Um, that, so, um, and then how to keep the live audience engagement or keep the attention. It could certainly be surveys and polls during the talks. A Q and A process, um, the chat window that we have here, um, which, which is sometimes a little bit. Um, so there needs to be a moderator in there. If you are, um, so I as a as a um, presenter, I see it not on the computer that has the. That's why I did a second computer. Um, if I had the, done the the slide deck screen share on my on the desktop computer. Um, I would not be able to see the chat and then somebody else would need to take care of the whole thing. Um, but uh, I have a backup plan and that's uh, Donna. <laughs> you can also collect questions via Twitter and a hashtag of the event if it's more than, yeah, um, yeah if you have hundreds and hundreds of people in, in your, um, in your um, conference or talk. Yeah. Um, and then Brady Bunch, that's kind of what we're doing now. Uh, in a minute, um, as soon as I get through the next slide. Oh, no, that's it already. So um, that's kind of my, uh, what I have for you today, um, my wisdom, but I know that other people of you kind of already have been in conferences or in, in uh, Zoom meetings. Um, so are there any questions or comments or ideas? Just unmute yourself and start talking. Birgit, maybe you could follow up on the conversation you and I had the other day about pointing a URL or a subdomain to your Zoom link to make it easier for people to remember how to come back frequently. Yeah, and I'm, I do need to kind of talk a little bit more about that because I have, um, you can have with a Zoom, you can have a, a third level domain, they yeah, are kind of a custom domain for it. Uh, but I don't know um, what you all um, 
mean by kind of pointing a domain to a Zoom link? Unless the password is changing for each meeting, yes. um, right now you're getting zoom.us slash j slash xyz 12 15 12. Mm -hmm. you know, and that's not easy for people to remember. But if you, if you either use a subdomain from your website um, or a, a custom URL that you could point to it, you could probably get for $10 from GoDaddy, mm -hmm. then people could easily find uh, the link to use over and over again without having to go back and see what was that URL, I don't know where it is, I can't yeah. find the email where it was, etc. Yeah, I have found that um, changing links for every Zoom meeting is definitely taking care of the, the Zoom um, crashes. Um, it also makes it um, easier to kind of follow through on later on. Um, so when you create a Zoom account, you get a personal I, um, ID kind of link, and that you can share with anybody in your signature or anybody, um, but that's also kind of prone to having other people coming in. Um, what helps with the, um, so if you have a link that is changing for every meeting, then you can schedule meetings um, separately and people are not coming in into your meeting um, that are back to back uh, with the same link. Um, I saw that uh, with a podcast host where we did um, um, interview and then uh, the last five minutes somebody came in because he had the same link um, to get um, interviewed by that podcast host. So it was a little um, awkward for a moment here. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so to for the links to get a little bit more you could use a bit.ly link yeah, and put it in there and um, just modify like I did with bit.ly nptech uh, for 04, nptech edu 0420, yeah, I customized that link. You can customize bit.ly links as well and make it um, for each meeting. Other questions? Suggestions? Ideas? you want to talk about the virtual background? The virtual background. It's all these little tools, right? <laughs> so Zoom has, when your camera is, I would say modern enough, you can have a virtual background. And I can be in San Francisco. See, there's a bridge. <laughs> or you could have, or- It doesn't um, require a green screen. It doesn't require a green screen. Yours would be the, yeah, Susan. <laughs> uh, Mark, you had a nice one from the Naples Pier. Right? So. Well, how do you do it? There's on the bottom of the screen is um, uh, where you see stop video, there's an arrow next to it. And then when you click on it, you get um, four links or four or five um, menu items. And one is choose virtual background. So I can also go into, well, everybody called me Spacehead. Now I am. I'm one. And, and for mine, what I learned was um, I could take a picture that I had on my hard drive and use that for my background. But in order to put my name up there, I had to reverse the image because it's showing to me that the letters are backwards, but it shows to you the correct way. Right, yeah, because the camera does it reverse, yes. And you can upload your own images. <laughs> That's mine right now. <laughs> yeah, and you can also add a video. I think Sharon, you had a video kind of with a little beach there. That was the, on the Zoom site. Oh, okay. The one from Thailand where yeah. I went uh, several months ago, another yeah. one. The other thing that I learned was, if you notice Duke mine, has one too, sorry. <laughs> nice okay. one, Duke. The other thing I learned is to have the bright light be in front of you, not behind you. So um, if you have a darker, it doesn't have to be a, a, a dark background, but if you have the light be, uh, in front of you and the background behind you slightly darker, then it uh, makes you look more alive. Yeah. Oh, and you can also talk about the filter that they offer. Otherwise, you look a little bit like you're in witness protection when you have the light behind <laughs> you. <laughs> Some people um, prefer that, actually. <laughs> but there's also the enhancement filter that uh, 
Zoom has that, that makes you look younger. <laughs> oh, it's on the video, video settings? Yes. Yes, on the video settings, and it says, um, touch up my appearance, but I'm already <laughs> touched up, I'm sorry. It's, all, it's the best I can do. <laughs> but you need to check that um, on the, my video. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so that's kind of how your appearance works there. And then if you're um, if you're on a call, the, the uh, etiquette is to try and be uh, in the live video versus a still photograph of yourself. I've tried I've had mine on and off because I was uh, in a in a background where other people were. But if you can, um, it's nice to show a live video of yourself. Um, I have uh, looking for suggestions on a, maybe a short video or a very, very easy explanation for people who really are not computer literate. How do we even get them engaged? Um, so what I found, um, do, you, do you mean in, uh, in terms of Zoom? Right. So I did um, uh, some training with, with a few organizations and uh, what made made it uh, very easy for them was to use the apps on the iPhone or iPad. Yeah? If the people have an iPad, they can download the um, app, the Zoom app from the store, and it's very intuitive. The, this was much easier for them to set up and get into a meeting rather than going through a computer. Um, yeah, I, so that's it, certainly the first is it very different? Uh, this most of the people I know have um, Androids. Um, it's the same in Android. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Android tablets or Android phones. Um, and if you take it, um, so some people come in with a with a um, portrait format. Yeah, if they take it the other way around, then they look more like a video in okay. this thing. But um, what is harder is, so someone on the phone cannot share anything. Yeah, uh, but most of the time people don't need to share things unless they're the speaker. Yeah? And um, you can bypass that by saying, okay, send me the slide, slide deck and I kind of share my screen and so people can see it and you can talk kind of thing. Um, it's always better when you have somebody there who can kind of forward your slides or something like that. How about um, okay. Ann, I'm sorry, Ann has a question and then Linda has a question. All right. Um, what other providers have virtual background options? I don't know, I'm sorry. No, my question was about Zoom bombers. Yeah. Um, can the host delete them from the meeting? Yes, yes, yeah. I, um, so first of all, there's one setting. So the, the, the Zoom bombers, what they did was come into meetings and then share their screen. So they kind of made everybody kind of look at stuff. Yeah. And there is a setting in the meeting settings in the, um, in the overall meeting set, default settings, that, you, that only the host can share meetings, mm -hmm. uh, share screen. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, every person that's in there has a little bubble up there. And for someone who is uh, um, the host, I can remove people. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. as soon as that happens, yeah, you can kind of take them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Does Thank anyone have any ex does anyone have any experience with someone calling in on a flip phone? Would it make a difference? A non-smartphone. It works, yeah. It's it's only okay. audio, yeah. And um, they, okay. of course, would need to follow the link that you give them for the um, for the meeting, so they can share the uh, see the screen share. Yeah. What's well, they, on the, yeah? They need to yeah. do that on a computer. But if they don't have the computer, is not set up with a microphone, or they don't know where it is, they don't have headphones or speakers set up, and they just call. I have a few uh, clients who actually call in and um, only look at their computer when I share something, yeah. Okay, are Janine and Christy calling in? Uh, is Janine is. Janine is. And Christy is not, yeah, and John. I, I don't have a camera, but okay. I have a headset with a microphone. Okay. So Christy. Yeah, I call in, but I'm seeing the screen. But we can't see your picture, so. Yeah. 
That's because I I I didn't join via video uh, okay. tonight. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I joined via okay. phone. Yeah. 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 You, you can also just upload a still photograph of yourself um, from your hard drive. You don't have to be live video. Cool. And then yeah, that's a nice yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. How do you, how do you do that? How do you just put a picture up I if you don't have a profile. camera? It, it think, allows I think, you. I think you go to profile settings and then I think it gives you the opportunity to put your name in as well as a photograph. In that choose a virtual background, I believe it asked, uh, there's a little plus sign where you can add photos there. Yeah, okay, thank you. I get mine. Yep. Yeah. Good. Yeah. And then, Birgit, you might also mention how the moderator or the host can mute everyone. So you don't, like if you're starting to get dogs barking in the background or people having side conversations, and especially with a large group of people, the yeah. host has that ability. Yeah. Yeah, that host can pretty much take control of that. Um, especially when you have, yeah, we have, what is it, 12, 15, 16 people? And, and a host can also uh, mute an individual participant. So if it, like if that participant is not paying attention, and they're talking to somebody else, then they can go back and mute them. Not yeah. So has anybody asked, uh, apart from Mark, um, a comment or a question um, so we can get them all answered? Okay. Going once. Well, my only comment is that I've used other tools aside from Zoom, um, some with better success than others. So. Um, you know, people aren't restricted to just using Zoom, basically. That's what I want to share. And uh, Skype is now back in the competition <laughs> with um, the chat feature. Um, and people are pretty familiar with Skype. So, uh, but there are other things like WebEx and now lifted their fees. Uh, so they have a free version. Um, I've been using Google Hangouts, which I guess is a... Um, a legacy kind of uh, version of the Google Meet. Mm -hmm. um, so there are other tools. If you're not wanting, you know, someone earlier was concerned about the Obviously. Zoom security yeah. issues. Uh, mm -hmm. There are other options. That's absolutely yeah. What yeah. I wanted to share. Yeah, um, Microsoft also has a Team, um, team. Meet. Yeah, um, true. So yeah. If you are on uh, a free Microsoft or Office 365 kind of thing. Um, yep. I think they opened up the um, team meet for um, um, for the uh, for those who have the free accounts or for nonprofits. Yeah. So Karen Campbell. Well, hi Karen. Hi Karen. Um, <laughs> has a question: Does Google Hangout cost now? Um, Google Hangout doesn't cost anything, but you can't get more than, was it 12 or 15 people in the meeting? I think it's 15, something mm -hmm. like that. Um, Google Meet is when you have a, a G Suite account, then Google Meet and is free. And they open it up to 250 people um, being able to attend a Hangout. Um, so that's... Um, that normally costs money. I think uh, otherwise it would be just uh, uh, 50. Um, and now uh, they open it up to 250. Has anybody heard of this eight by eight? It's supposed to be a competitor of Zoom. There yeah. are a lot of, um, no, I have not. No. Anybody else here? No. What have you heard? Do tell. Well, I was just looking into it because it was recommended on some site and it seems to have a lot of abilities, the same as Zoom, but mm -hmm. I haven't, I haven't logged into it yet to find out exactly what it does, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a not, it doesn't look like it's in the United States. Well, it's because also a, more a, um, a call center kind of um, software. Okay. Thank you. It's for business. Yeah. What I just see on the website. Which okay, is, thanks. Uh, it's, it's also interesting how, what kind of um, URL they have because it's 8x8.com. <laughs> yeah, 
Um, I also use, so I've been part of, uh, yeah, well, we're getting, I think we could do another two hours about that. Um, but I offer anybody who wants to test things and wants to kind of be a do some practice rounds or tech rehearsals of what they um, want to do for the board meetings or so to just send me an email, um, which is um, birgit.pauli at NPTEC. Oops. I can't type, hang on. <laughs> Um, and um, I can, um, we can set it up and um, I, I can help you, or yeah, we can just rehearse things um, before you go live in, in a meeting that you, in first time. I'm very happy to do that. Um, it was a pleasure to have you all here. And we have on, um, and Donna is uh, going to tell us now who's go what's going to happen on May 5th, I think is the next one. Yeah, May 5th, we have a panel. We're going to talk about databases and the hidden gems in them, um, as well as a little bit about privacy. Uh, we have a panel of three who are going to join us, um, starting with Rachel from, shoot. Network for Good. Network for Good. Um, I'm really excited. She, um, she has a lot of knowledge and I think she's going to be really helpful. Um, and then we have Riley Randolph with Sukup's uh, um, Strat Strategic Designs. Is that their name? Yeah. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we have Andy Reed, um, who when we first talked about doing databases and, and how to use them and get something out of them, he's the first person I thought about. He has worked for the Humane Society. Um, he has worked for uh, the Naples Children Education Foundation. Uh, I met him when he helped us set up our whole system at the Marco Y. And he's now in um, working for a for-profit organization. But between the three of them, um, we may run over a little bit like we are tonight. Yeah. Um, just with questions and answers. So, you know, it's more than databases. It's what you can get out of them. And a lot of us don't know how to read them. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to that. And I'm glad that you are able to put this all together. And we could do um, this um, next, next month again. And um, we, we, um, we do an hour, but we, with Q&A, we can just stay as long as you, we have still questions. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us from all yeah. over the world. It was really fantastic. Look and, for a follow-up um, <laughs> follow email from me tomorrow. Um, fill out the survey. Give us a little bit of an evaluation, what we could have done better. Um, Be kind. Questions. Yeah. And a link to the PowerPoint tonight. So, okay. Great. All Thank right. You. See you all on the Facebook group if you want okay. to. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, everyone. Be well. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thank you. Night. Thank you. Bye bye. Puppy. Oh. Puppy, where's the puppy? There she is. What's her name? Have you named her? Cute. This is Josie. Josie. All right. All right. Cool. Josie. I was going to call her Paco if you didn't have a yeah. name for her. <laughs> <laughs> She's been here. Ten days now, and she's a good girl. Yes, she looks like a good girl. What a sweetheart! She's all right. All night. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Bye bye. I'm bye. ending. Bye. 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 bye, bye, Anne. Bye, Donna. Bye, Bridget. Bye, Anne. Bye. <laughs> bye, Janine. <laughs> all right. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Cool. Okay. <laughs>